Hey everybody, today I'm gonna show you how to get from 1 to 99 hunter as fast as possible. First up, every method in this guide uses different traps and hunting equipment, which I will mention when I get to them. But unless you're doing a wilderness method, you're pretty much always going to want to be wearing weight reducing clothing like Graceful, and if you can afford it, a ring of endurance. The hunter outfits that exist in game are actually just cosmetic. They were originally intended to increase your chance of trapping creatures, but that mechanic was broken when the skill launched and it just never got fixed in old school. Now, as you level Hunter, you unlock the ability to place more traps. Not every method has you place traps, but most do. Every Hunter method in the wilderness also allows you to place one extra trap. You can also use more traps early if you boost your Hunter level with Hunter potions. For example, let's say you're level 37. You can use a Hunter potion to boost to level 40 and use an extra trap as long as the boost is active. One more quick tip before we get started. In this guide, you'll notice a few monsters and tiles that have a blue outline. These are features called ground markers and NPC indicators from the Runelight client and can be turned on in the client settings. After doing so, just shift right click whatever you want to highlight and press highlight. If you're on the Steam client, I also believe some form of shift click tile markers exists. As for training, I'll give you the absolute fastest route before discussing alternatives. Levels 1 to 9 are really easy. You're essentially just going to take a quiz, but don't worry, you can cheat. To take this quiz, you'll need to go to the Natural History Museum in Northeast Varrock. Once you get there, go downstairs and speak to Orlando Smith to start the Natural History quiz. Essentially, all you have to do is go up to these displays and answer three questions each. To find the answers, you listen to the Natural Historian's lectures who are located in each of the four display rooms. But who wants to listen to lectures? If you're on Runelight, you can skip that step altogether because it highlights the answers when you open each quiz. If not, you can also just look up the answers on the wiki page in the description below. The old saying goes, cheaters never win, but in this case, they definitely do. When you finish everything, talk to Orlando and you'll instantly get to level 9 Hunter and Slayer. After level 9, the best training method is kind of just a lot of waiting around. If you have the patience for them, minus wait time, birdhouse trapping is the easiest and fastest way to 99, assuming you won't be doing any tick manipulation. First off, to access this training method, you'll need to have completed the Bone Voyage quest so you can access Fossil Island. For gear, I'd recommend weight reducing items like Graceful. Next up, for inventory, depending on your hunter level, you can use different tiers of birdhouses. To get the most XP per run, you want to use the best tier you have access to. You can just buy the houses straight off the GE, but for the higher tier ones, you'll likely get them cheaper if you just make them yourself. Keep in mind, you will need a specific crafting level depending on which house you want to make. You just need one of whatever log you want to use, a clockwork, a chisel, and a hammer. In total, you'll need four birdhouses per run. You'll also need seeds to place in the birdhouse later, but it doesn't really matter what seeds you use, so just use cheap hop seeds like barley. Each birdhouse requires 10 seeds. Lastly, you'll need a dig site pendant. You can make them by casting the level 3 enchant spell on ruby necklaces, but you can't do that without first finding a clean necklace at the Varrock Museum specimen tables. It's really easy though. After completing the dig site quest, you can enter this area, take a cleaning kit off the wall, spam click these rocks to pick up uncleaned finds, clean them over at the table, show your clean finds to these guys, and hopefully you get a clean necklace to show them fast. The other finds give you kudos and sometimes random junk, so that's cool too. Anyway, now with all that, we're ready to go. Rub your dig site pendant and teleport to Fossil Island. If you haven't already done so, you should go unlock three of the island's magic mush trees. First, there's the one right next to you inside the house, next, the one in the mushroom meadow, and lastly, the one in the verdant valley. Okay, now now let's continue with the run. So after teleporting to Fossil Island, use the mush tree and travel to the Verdant Valley. Here there's two birdhouse spots. Just place your birdhouse on a spot, fill it with seeds, and move on to the second one. After doing so, use the mush tree again to teleport to the mushroom meadow. First run north where you'll see another birdhouse spot. After completing that one, run south to the final birdhouse. Now in about 50 minutes, you can come back and harvest the birdhouses. You can do other stuff in RuneScape, log out, whatever, it really doesn't matter. But the wait time is always 50 minutes. When time is up, you just repeat exactly what we did before, except this time you remove the old birdhouse first before putting up a new one. When you harvest the birdhouses, you'll get your clockwork back, along with birds, nests, feathers, and even a bunch of raw bird meat, which automatically drops to the ground. 
ground. I'm not sure how the birdhouse managed to pluck these birds and how that much raw meat fit inside, but it's probably best if I don't ask questions. On screen now, there's a table with data courtesy of the wiki displaying a theoretical XP per hour that you'll get doing birdhouses. From 80 to 99, assuming you've at least partially completed the Eagle's Peak quest and you want to get really sweaty, the fastest experience in the game is tick manipulated black chin chompas. But even without manipulating ticks, they're great XP and even better profit. If you did black chins from level 80 to 99, you'd make a profit of almost 120 million GP, which is phenomenal for a skilling method. You can start black chins at level 73, but until 80, birdhouses will be faster. Now for our sweaty friends out there, tick manipulation can be pretty hard. I use it on occasion, but I don't enjoy doing it here, and fully explaining it would double this video's length. So if you want to learn how to get good at it, I'll link a 10 minute guide on box trap mechanics below. Now for this method, you're going to want some gear to defend from PKers. As long as you turn on the PK skull prevention box, you're safe to bring three high value items to protect yourself with. So personally, for my three, I like to bring a Serpentine Helm for poison immunity, an Armadil Chestplate for range and magic defense, as well as a negative crush bonus, which I'll explain later, and a Ring of Suffering. Then I grab a Magic Shortbow and cheap arrows, Black Dehyde Chaps, Black Dehyde Van Braces, Mystic Boots, a Majorina One Cape, and a Phoenix Necklace to save me if my health gets too low. For inventory, you'll want Box Traps, some Brews, Super Restores, Angler Fish for combo eating, an Amulet of Glory or Royal Seed Pod to teleport out with, maybe a Din's Bulwark Swap, but make sure not to go over three valuable items so you don't lose one to PKers, and Flowers. Yes, Flowers. I'll explain why in a bit. If you wanted, you can also bring an Imp in a Box. They allow you to bank either two items or two stacks of items. However, they don't work above level 30 wilderness, or if you're teleblocked, or if you're in combat. To get them, you just use magic boxes to trap imps. I've found North of Yanail and the Chasm of Fire are good spots for this. So whenever you want to bank, just run to level 30 wilderness, use the box on the chins, and run back up. Now there's a few ways to get to black chins. You could run north from the Pharaoh's Enclave, use a Revenant Cave teleport and run south, or use the Wilderness Obelisks. But I prefer just bringing a cheap axe and taking the canoe system from Edgeville. It drops you off basically right on top of the chin spot. The method itself is pretty simple. Lay box traps and wait for chinchampas to get caught, but there's ways to optimize it without tick manipulation. Here is all the spawn locations for black chins. Every chin is tied to one specific spawn tile, so let's say the one that spawns on this tile spawns in and runs away instead of going into our trap. Rather than waiting for it to come back, we can just shoot it and it'll respawn back on that tile. Keep in mind, as you'll see in a second, the chin won't always spawn on the exact tile, as on occasion it'll spawn on tiles next to it, but this method still works regardless. Now some players even like to use an alt account just for shooting chins, which as you can see speeds up XP quite a bit. But most importantly, it's smart to lay your box traps right next to these spawns so that they're more likely to enter them right away. I personally like to make a box around one of the spawns. Now let's say a PKer shows up. With the setup I have on and the food in my inventory, it is really easy to get away. In fact, I'd consider it almost overkill. You're just a few tiles away from level 30 wilderness, so assuming they don't teleblock you, just run south and use your glory or C pod, but let's say you are teleblocked and you don't think you can make it all the way to level 1 wilderness. Instead, you can run west to where the hobgoblins are. On the way there, you'll want to equip the flowers, start to brew up as much as you can so you can drain your attack stats, remove the serpentine helm so you don't poison the hobgoblin by mistake, and then attack a hobgoblin. After doing so, you should turn on auto retaliate just to be safe. Since you're holding flowers, your melee stats are drained quite a bit, and you have the armadale chestplate to lower your crush bonus which is the only attack style flowers have. You'll likely do almost no damage to the hobgoblin as a result. At this point, most PKers just give up. However, if they stick around and you think that you or the hobgoblin won't survive the whole telly block, you can just X out of the game and hope for the best. Definitely make sure you put on auto retaliate before doing so though. After one minute, regardless of what's happening to your character, you'll automatically be logged out. All right, now let's talk alternative hunter training methods. At level seven, you unlock Feldip Weasels. All you need is a noose wand and some staminas, but I'd highly recommend a few rings of pursuit. They have 10 charges and have a 25% chance to reveal the weasel's entire track path. You'll know when it works because your chat box gets spammed with messages. A bone crusher is also useful here if you want to spend less time dropping items. The easiest way to get here is by using fairy ring code AKS and running very far south. 
So, to start tracking, click on one of the burrows in southern Feldip Hills. The west one usually involves less running. From there, follow the tracks, search bushes, plants, and burrows, and eventually you'll see in chat that something might be hiding in the bush. Right click, attack it, and repeat. At level 15, you can start catching ruby harvest and copper longtails in the Piscatoris Hunter area. The fastest way to get there is by using fairy ring code AKQ. All you need is two bird snares, a butterfly net, a few butterfly jars, and a stamina. If you have a bone crusher, I'd also bring that so, again, you spend less time dropping items. Set up the traps as so, and catch butterflies while waiting for birds to get caught. When your jars get full, just release the butterflies. It's a lot of clicking, but solid XP. Plus, the idea of catching butterflies to train your account in a medieval adventure game is kind of funny. At level 29, you'll be summoning your inner swamp lettics and catching swamp lizards. They're found in two places in Mauritania, which are shown on screen now, so just go wherever you want. All you need is rope small fishing nets, and staminas. Keep in mind, at level 40, you unlock the ability to use three traps at once. As mentioned earlier, if you'd like, at level 37, you can use hunter potions to boost three levels so you can use them early. At level 43, you unlock catching spotted kebits at the Piscatoris falconry area. The fastest way to get here is once again by using fairy ring code AKQ. All you need for this method is staminas and some GP. You'll also need your hands, weapon, and shield slot empty. If you have one, I'd also bring a bone crusher. Rent a falcon for 500 coins from Matthias. From here, just click on spotted kebits. Keep in mind, the closer you are to the kebit, the faster XP you'll get, because if you fail to catch, the falcon will fly back slower than you can run. So as stupid as it looks, run right up to those kebits and make that falcon's life easy. Also, at level 57, you unlock dark kebits, which are in the same area and give more XP. At level 60, you should catch red salamanders. Same concept as swamp lizards so stams, small fishing nets, and ropes. The only difference is they're located south of the Arania Altar Teleport. Keep in mind, at level 60, you unlock the ability to place four traps, which is why you start them now, even though you unlock them at level 59. But if you'd like, you can boost. Another alternative at level 60 is catching maniacal monkeys. This is my absolute favorite hunter method because it's pretty AFK. Now, to do this method, you will need to have completed the Monkey Madness 2 quest. If you've done so, all you need for items is a Cruck Monkey Grigri, Baskets of Bananas, and if you'd like, some Bones to Bananas tablets. Once you have all that, travel to Cruck's dungeon on Apatol and climb onto a stunted demonic gorilla. Go over to a big rock, place a banana underneath, and wait. When you run out of bananas, you can either teleport out to grab more, or if you chose to bring the bones to bananas tablets, you can grab bones off the floor and use those. Keep in mind, only the tablets will work here. The spell itself doesn't work in monkey form. If you'd like, you can also bring things like bolts or dart tips so you have something to do while waiting for monkeys to get caught under the rock. Or if you're like me, keep RuneScape open on the side while you're in class. Just don't get caught. At level 67, you can catch black salamanders. They're located in the Boneyard Hunter area in the wilderness, but nobody really PKs here. You can get here easily by using a burning amulet and teleporting to the Chaos Temple, then running northeast. One advantage of the wilderness is that you have the ability to place one extra trap regardless of your level. They're the same process as other salamanders, so bring small fishing nets and ropes. However, if you're scared of a PKer showing up, if you have 70 attack, magic, and ranged, bring along some Harlander tar. You can equip the salamander, use the tar as ammo, and it'll literally breathe fire on them although it does look a little cruel. At level 80 Hunter, 31 Herblore, and after completion of the Bone Voyage quest, you unlock one of the most relaxing and, in my opinion, one of the only fun hunter methods in the game, Irby Boar on Fossil Island. Irby is kind of like the Feldip Weasels from before, but way less annoying. As for items, all that's really required is Secatars and Stamina Potions. The magic Secatars from the Fairy Tale Part 1 quest are even better, because you get more herbs per boar, and they're more likely to be high quality expensive ones, that real good stuff. Irby's herbs are also scaled based on your herblore level, so if you only want the best herbs, you should get 99 herblore first. Wow, that is a lot of the word herb. Moving on, I'd also highly, highly recommend buying an herb sack either from Tithe Farm or a Slayer Master. Both ways, you have to buy with points, which kind of sucks, but trust me, you want one. Without one, you'll need to bank extremely often or drop a lot of herbs or you can also note herbs on the tool leprechaun in 
the hardwood tree patch area. Even if you do have an herb sack, leave some inventory space open as Herby frequently drops fossils. When your inventory starts to get full, you can drop them off at a fossil storage crate next to the mycelium pool. Before we get started on the method itself, if you're on Runelite, I'd recommend turning on the Herby Board plugin as well as installing the Fossil Island plugin from the plugin hub. The Fossil Island plugin removes a ton of the island's unnecessary scenery, which will help you click around better and save you quite a bit of frames. Without it on, every time I teleport here, I actually hear my laptop's fans kick in like a jet engine. Lastly, switch your NPC attack options to hidden so you don't accidentally misclick on ancient fungi. The method itself is pretty simple. There's five spots you can start a hunt at, which are all shown on the map with a hunter icon. I prefer to teleport to the mushroom meadow and start here, but you can do wherever. After starting, tracks will appear on the floor. Follow the tracks and search the surrounding scenery to discover more tracks. You'll know you found the end when the tracks lead to a tunnel. Simply click on the tunnel to attack it, click on the herbivore to shear it, and repeat. On occasion, you'll lose track of the tracks and will have to start again, but it doesn't happen that often. This guide has you spending a lot of time in sticky, warm, and overgrown jungles. If that sentence can also describe your real life nether regions, then you need today's sponsor, Manscaped. They sent over their all-in-one performance package 4.0, so let's check it out. First is the Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer. This is Manscaped's fourth generation electric waterproof trimmer with advanced skin safe technology, which reduces nicks and cuts on the most sensitive regions of the body. It has a cordless charging system, up to 90 minutes with a full charge, and it even has a travel lock feature. Now that the jungle is trimmed down, we need to get it smelling fresh. The performance package also comes with Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. Whether you need all day odor protection or a quick refresh, they've got it covered. Manscaped also has the Weed Whacker, a wireless nose and ear trimmer with the same skin safe technology as the groin trimmer. For a limited time only, you get all this, plus two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. So go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off, plus free international shipping, plus those two free gifts when you use promo code Colonello at checkout. So that's about it. As always, a huge thank you to the Old School Wiki team as much of the data and training methods were sourced from them. Thanks for watching.